Hello everyone, this is NPC's Economics. The debt cycle is the progression of large economic sequences that follow a certain order, which arise due to the inherent structure of our monetary system and human nature. The long-term debt cycle, the short-term debt cycle, and productivity growth are the three forces that drive the economy. The United States economy runs on debt, from consumer credit cards and automobile debts, where delinquency rates are currently skyrocketing, to the government debt that is piling higher and deeper. Credit is an integral part of the U.S. economy. In a sense, banks don't lend money, but rather credit. When someone goes to a bank and takes out a mortgage to buy a home, the bank collects interest on the loan they give out and the borrower gets to purchase something today that they otherwise would not be able to afford. Sounds like a win-win situation, right? Such a transaction increases the money supply in the system as new money is created out of thin air that did not otherwise exist. But eventually, the borrower needs to pay back the mortgage, which means this person will spend less than they make for the next X number of years during the, for the duration of a mortgage. In other words, the borrower is pulling consumption forward from the future. The long-term debt cycle lasts for 75 to 100 years, and the short-term debt cycle lasts for 5 to 8 years. And to understand the long-term debt cycle, we need to understand the short-term debt cycle. Short-term debt cycles are easier to track and understand, and their effects can be felt more immediately. During an economic expansion, the system's debt level keeps increasing until the economy becomes susceptible to an economic shock, which is usually triggered by a negative catalyst, leading to economic contraction and deleveraging. In response to contraction and deleveraging, policymakers and central banks typically respond by lowering rates and injecting fiscal stimulus into the economy to offset the otherwise deflationary period. In the United States, since the 1970s, every time the Federal Reserve enacted monetary policies, every short business cycle in modern US history has ended with higher debt as a percentage of GDP and lower interest rates compared to the previous cycle. The end result is the economy becomes more leveraged than before. And with more debt, the country is borrowing more from future spending. The debt to GDP ratio goes to the moon while the interest rate goes to the ground. A long-term debt cycle ends when these short-term debt cycles string together. Debt levels become unsustainable and interest rates become zero bound. And since debt levels have gone to the moon, the usual policy tools don't work anymore, forcing policymakers and the central bank to use unconventional tools. Those who are familiar with Ray Dalio's work, such as how the economic machine works, should be very familiar with what I have just said so far. Currently, the United States is in a position similar to the late 1940s post-World War II. I have talked about it in one of my previous videos here, and previously, the Great Recession that happened in the late 2000s is similar to the Great Depression of the 1930s. That's about where we're at, near the end of a long-term debt cycle. The accumulation of debt leads to the government bailing itself and others out by buying assets and or printing money and devaluing it. If history rhymes, that's a possible scenario in the future for us. But perhaps that's where the similarity might end. There are at least two things that are different now compared to before. The first one is demographics. After World War II, people felt that there was a new hope, a new beginning. A strong post-war economy combined with a desire for normalcy and perhaps, arguably, the campaign to outnumber communists contributed to the baby boom. But in the current timeline, what the United States is having is the opposite, a baby bust of some sort. In the post-pandemic world, cost of living has gone to the moon 
and so has the cost of parenthood. And even before the pandemic, after the Great Recession, during the supposedly longest economic expansion in the United States history, guess what? Fertility rates still fell year after year except for 2014. As I have argued before, the United States has pretty much soft-locked itself into a fertility doom loop. Hey, mainstream media, you want to churn out rage baits and doom porn to generate clicks, right? Be careful what you wish for. I simply cannot think of a situation where people are enticed to reproduce, at least not with the paltry lip service from the establishment. Over the next few decades, at the very least, the share of working age population will decline. The second one is productivity. Total factor productivity growth measures how productive are capital and labor resources. If you want a more detailed explanation of productivity, you can check out my previous video on it here. But the TLDR version is that total factor productivity growth stagnated around 1% per year. Pretty meh. Furthermore, as per the early 1990s, labor force and productivity growth trends weakened materially. Potential GDP growth started declining. And to prop it up, the United States chose to fix it with a ton of debt. Public and private debt levels as a percentage of GDP amongst developed economies skyrocketed from under 200% to over 300% in less than two decades. Until the pandemic hit, real interest rates have been declining for at least three decades, allowing a system with lower structural growth offset by more and more leverage at cheaper and cheaper borrowing costs to thrive. And that's how we got here today, a world that got drunk on cheap money. Right now, the Fed is trying to fight inflation, but that requires higher real yields, and our over-leveraged system cannot bear that for a very long period of time. And if the United States chooses to inflate the debt away, doesn't that make what Jay Powell's efforts to fight inflation ultimately futile? The United States is far from being the only country in this dilemma. Most Western countries, plus Japan and South Korea, have even higher levels of debt to GDP. In the past, the United States has managed to rein in its debt relative to GDP by a combination of raising taxes, lowering spending, and economic growth. But will today's politicians make that painful choice of raising taxes, which risks pissing off their corporate overlords, or lowering spending, which risks pissing off other groups of people? With the headwinds of aging demographics and lower productivity, it would take a real miracle for economic growth to outpace debt. So what do you think? If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like this one. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you next week. Bye!